Hello, hello. Welcome into Anime Plus, episode 90. I'm your host, Alex Light, with Sparky3. Hopefully you're having a phenomenal day today, whatever day you're watching or listening to this ever-so-wonderful podcast. Uh, join with me, as always, I got Zach here on Discord. Zach, how you doing? How you feeling, my friend? I'm ready for it. Still going good with all this fall lineup, and we still got more coming out. God, I know. Yeah, uh, you got to check out Two Year Eternity, uh, the mm -hmm. season two that started. I forgot it came out, so that's on my radar. I did check out the prologue for Gundam. Really enjoyed it. Got to watch the, the other few episodes. And we finally have a series leaving our fucking lineup. <laughs> it is a glorious day. How are you feeling about that? I mean, it's a thing. I mean, it took only like almost three years. But we finally made it, and that's what it's matters. It's finally over. Finally! No more Dragon Quest after today. Episode 90, the end of Dragon Quest. Thank God. What it's a just journey. Just aesthetic. No, well, yeah, there is the game coming out for sure. Uh, okay, so a few things. Uh, number one, first thing here, uh, is if next week, 11-1, Tuesday, 5.30, ish p.m central standard time tune in to the latest episode of a terrible football show even if you're not a football fan just watch the beginning that's all i'm asking for watch the beginning and then dip the hell out once we actually start football chat because at the beginning of that episode we have some very big reveals and big news that we can't wait to share with you number one we're revealing our new studio and it is awesome so please tune in there for that number two our agent ink shop will be launched with our jerseys. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Animan Plus has the best jersey of all four jerseys that we have. And it looks amazing. Zach, isn't that true? Yes, yes it is. That is currently my favorite jersey. That's a lot of people's favorite jersey. Even people that are not anime fans, I showed them the jersey. Like, oh yeah, Animan Plus is the best. I'm like, yeah, I know, yeah, it is. So, and <laughs> we also have a third announcement that's not as big as the other two, but it's still pretty cool. It's it's the next step in Sparky Three content. So definitely tune in, please. I we would appreciate that. Just the beginning of a terrible football show. Give us like ten minutes to go on a hype rant and see everything new and pretty, and then dip out. You know, once we start football chat, it's it's all good. Uh, so looking forward to that for sure. Uh, also, just noticed this yesterday. Also, shout out to the Josh Pillow, looking as handsome as ever. Look at that beautiful bastard. Uh, but uh, so one thing I do want to give a shout out because I didn't realize this. I thought it was really cool. Before I went on vacation and we took two weeks off, we got as high as number eighth ranked podcast in the animation manga category in Canada. So shout out to that. Shout out to anime. Shout out to, shout out to Canada. Let's go. Thank you to everyone in Canada listening to this show. Being the grind, man. Yeah, being a friend, telling a friend, whatever. We appreciate you. And it's, we're still ranked. I think we're like 55 now. Yeah, we're still in the 50s. Yeah, so I was like, all right, cool. You know, hey, <laughs> I'll take that. You know, I just happened to randomly jump on, you know, Chartable. I'm like, eh, I haven't looked here in a while. Let's see how we look. And uh, it's like peak peak height, you know, eighth. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> this is like, when did that happen? Oh, it happened was, right before we went to vacation. Okay. When you told me that, I was very confused. It's like, I mean, I'll take the win, but what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a win for sure. Uh, we may also have some more wins coming soon with Animan Plus. So stay tuned for that. And just really sparking three in general. Really cool stuff coming. Very, very excited. I'm serious. Please tune in Tuesday, 11 1. Just show up for like 10 minutes, drop in, say hi. Hey, I'm from Animan Plus. I'm here. <laughs> If you do that, I'll give you a, I'll give you a prize, but you won't know the prize unless you come. That's all I'll say. I'll give you a prize. I promise there's a like hundred percent a real prize that you will get if you come say hi. I'm from Animan Plus. What's the big? What are you showing me here today? You will get a prize. Zach, is, right. Zach doesn't believe me, but I promise there will be a prize. <laughs> it's not that I don't believe you. It's just the thing of where's it coming from. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm gonna give I'm them all a prize. Right. <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, we are still con obviously continuing on with all of the fall shows. Uh, there is so many. Uh, with My Hero, Chainsaw Man, Spy Family, Blue Lock. Thank God Dragon Quest is done. Uh, Gundam, Bleach, and now To Your Eternity, which I also need to tune into as well. So that's super cool. I actually turned down the music now because I think I've gotten through all the main spills. You guys know the rest. Join the Discord, website, merch store, Twitter. You guys know the rest. Uh, also, the... Um, uh, Animan Plus YouTube officially has its handle. So, youtube.com at Animan Plus. Um, spelling out plus, of course. This is a URL we're talking about. I can't use a plus symbol there. Um, you know, for the name, that is. Won't let me. 
So, yeah, but yeah, uh, youtube.com forward slash at Animan Plus. If you haven't heard about Handles by chance, uh, it is completely possible that you haven't heard about Handles. I feel like the main people that really paid attention to this email are people that actually make content, you know? I feel like everyone got the email. If you have a YouTube yes. account, you got the email, I promise you. But, like, again, if you're not really making content, you're probably not paying attention to it. I'm going to be real. I know some people that still don't know about Handles. Uh, Handles is just a new thing going out to everyone, which is really sick, because normally to get a custom URL, you have to uh, get past a certain subscriber threshold and channel um, age threshold. So it makes it kind of difficult to say, you know, like we used to have to with Sparky3. Like, oh, yeah, just go to YouTube and type in Sparky3. You'll find us. Yeah. Uh, which would be tr true. You would. But while we were still making content at the beginning, you would find us as well as Project Spark E3 demo. <laughs> <laughs> from like 2013 project spark was a fun game i had that at one point I don't know what happened to it though um i don't either yeah but uh no uh yeah so that is that is really cool i, I was able to select the handle here today um so again youtube.com forward slash at symbol and mm plus plus being spelled out i'll have that down in the description below going forward as well so that's super cool subscribe to that channel it's gonna make it easier for us to transition over to that channel which may involve that third surprise just saying say that other thing is i could also get a handle on my youtube channel that has like two videos from like eight years ago on it oh yeah yeah true true there'd be no point in it but you'd have it <laughs> i would have it yeah i mean you'll you'll get an auto generated one anyway here come the 14th yeah. so it, it may just give you your name because your name is pretty unique I mean, I got a dumb five-second video that's got 300 views. All right. <laughs> that's all you need, man. Oh, and then, of course, don't forget this show will be starting live. And we actually picked a date. We have a date. Yes. Um, well, what is the date? We know the episode. Episode 93. Uh, whatever date that's going to be. What date? So three weeks be? from now. Basically, yeah. Uh, so what, November 17th? That sounds right. Yeah, November 17th. Yes. Yeah, November 17th. Episode 93 of Animan Plus. We will be live at like 5.30ish or 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we'll be live from that point forward. The reason why we're waiting a couple weeks is because the next two weeks we're recording on Wednesdays. Because we have plans. I have plans next week. I'm going to see One Piece Red. So you can expect a review from me on uh, the week, the following week. And then the week after, uh, we're all, me, Zach, and a couple others are going to see Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So we're just busy. Uh, so we're going to record early on Wednesday. Now, I will also say for the live episodes, there will there will 100% still be pre-recorded episodes thrown in the mix, but those are going to be like 90% of the time topic-based, I would say. I would I would say for us not to do a live show that's the normal show, both of our schedules had to be super conflicting to make it difficult that week. You know what I mean? Like Thanksgiving. Well, we're taking off that week. So. Yes. So wait, are we going live and then immediately taking a break? Yes. <laughs> should, damn should we even go live that date now i didn't even notice that should we just wait till december 1st i mean we've done it before yeah i guess you're right we'll figure that out if we change we got a couple <laughs> weeks we'll 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 figure it out and let you know next week it will either be november 17th or december 1st i forgot that thanksgiving's right after that so yeah we, we take off thanksgiving week uh, so yeah, but yeah, live, live episodes will always be like our normal spill weekly shows, uh, manga and stuff like that. The pre-recorded stuff is going to be anything topic based that we do top 10, top five, favorite, this favorite, this general topic, this, and maybe on a blue moon, a pre-recorded may be some, you know, our normal thing. It, if it would, we, it would just be because we had a super conflicting schedules and you know, we didn't want to advertise like every week. Like, Oh, we're going live on Monday. Oh, we're going live on Wednesday. We're going live on Friday. Shit like that. So anyway. Look, look forward to live Anime Man Plus. I'm looking forward to it. The other two shows are live. Live live shows are just like, makes it really easy for me in the after stuff. You know what I mean? So, live shows are just more entertaining. They are more entertaining, you know? Like uh, this Discord stuff we've have been having to do. I'm not a fan of it. Oh, oh, this? Yeah. The, the remote I mean, it stuff. works for what we need right now, but yeah. I always enjoy being in studio more because we always get more interaction from each other. Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, this is the last one, man. You know, this is the last one. Next week on studio stuff, unless someone, unless we literally just can't make it. You know what I mean? Studio stuff. It's going to be great. I'm pumped. Yes. The studio is legit. Uh, but we should probably start looking to dive into some stuff here. Um, is there anything that we want to shout out, though, before we do? Uh, there's another Naruto 
uh, story manga starting up. I forgot which one this one is. So you have the Sasuke one going on, and there's another one that started up as well. Um, I that one. Yeah, it's um, this one is called the um, the Steam Ninja Scrolls, the manga. It's focusing what? on um, uh, Asuma's daughter Kakashi and uh, Mike Guy in their older age. Which ones? Oh, oh, Asuma's kid. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, also, shout out to uh, Ranger Reject officially being confirmed for an anime in 2023. Really? Yep. Yep. That's gonna be intense. I'm I'm here for that. I haven't I, look. I know I haven't read the manga in a while, but it is a fun manga, and I do intend to go back to it at some point and just binge it because it is it is very fun. And uh, anime, checking it out day one. I'm here for it. You know, I, I'm I grew up on Power Rangers, so that automatically made me interested in the series and just it being like a reverse thing where the Power Rangers are evil, psychotic bastards. Uh, it was super cool, man. Uh, ooh, oh, oh. Damn, that is sick. I just came across uh, Mishino's Core Family Volume 15 cover, and it looks awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, that was that was a couple main things that I thought of. Uh, Ace Dime Part 2, I think you mentioned last week that that ended. Uh, yep. I did see some news about it that, according to the you know the creator, he's got burnout writing it, and he didn't want his mental issues to affect the story and characters. He wants to continue the story in the future, but not in a weekly schedule. Uh, and then Naruto franchise is teasing a new announcement for December 17th at Jump Fest. I wonder what that's going to be. That should be interesting. It was, it was Jump Fest last year that demolished my hopes when, like, Dragon Quest is still going. Fuck. Yep. Yep. Oh, you got anything you want to shout out? I'm looking. Okay. I'm not seeing anything. I'm still holding out hope for my Hitman Reborn revival. That is a nice cover. I just came across it too from Mission Yozakura. Oh, dude, it's so good. Of Shinzo. Uh, it looks so fucking yeah. cool. I mean, the return of Hunter Hunter. Yep, shout out to that. I, it was funny. Josh read the chapter. He texted me. He's just like, all right, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and reread a lot because I have no idea what the fuck's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, I'm curious about that Naruto announcement. You know, I'm very curious about that, what that could be. I'm thinking a movie. I feel like a movie. I think a movie's going to happen. That'd be kind of cool. What would be really cool? Oh, here's that's... something interesting. What? Apparently, according to Terajima, the writer of Ace of Diamond 2, is that more or less he felt burnt out from it. It's sort of why he ended it when he did. That's what I just said. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was checked out, apparently, then. Yeah, that's what, that's what I just... I, you're the exact tweet from, what, Weekly Show to Magazine News? Yeah, yeah, I, I just I, that's what I just read. <laughs> I apparently checked out. Fuck me. Okay. It, what what happened to you just now is what happened to me on Spark Bark when I was trying to remember Thanks Killing and you guys just talked about Thanks Killing. Yep. <laughs> that's what just happened just now. <laughs> oh man! Shout out to Spark Bark. That show will come back eventually. Eventually. Well, with the new no. studio being done, I feel like it's going to come back a lot sooner rather than later. I'll put it that well, way. Getting off Twitter. Just found Makima body pillow. We're good. Oh no! Got to get that for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that and pair it and put it right beside. So here, like in my background in the new studio, I'll, I'll work it out. We'll have the mocking body pillow right beside Josh and have it lined up where Josh is looking up at her, like all excited. <laughs> you just want to make him dingy. Yeah, Josh is gonna be dingy. Look, at one point, Josh was basically dingy, <laughs> like 10 years ago. He was. Yeah, he was dingy, so. <laughs> Just got that, the cool transformation. Yeah, exactly. Love you, Josh. You're a great guy. Love you. Miss you. Your pillow will always remind you of us. I yeah, know. Just look, look how handsome it is. I mean, God damn. We do need an actual body pillow version of him, though. We need like a full plug. man. That that clip of just like, wait, so you're telling me somewhere in the world right now there's a body pillow with my face on it? Yeah, more than likely since it got lost hey, in, in transit. It's, it still hasn't come back into fruition. Yeah, no one has brought that one to light. Yeah, it's still out there, man. I'm sorry, but it's just the facts. All right, let's go ahead and hop in anime. Zach, right. I'm gonna let you lead off. End this fucking journey for us right now. End it. I uh, just get it over with. We're done. Here, uh, let's get let's let's hear it. Dragon Quest episode one hundred, the finale of this damn show. So honestly, it was sort of a 
lackluster finale for me. Um, it still managed to hit some tropes, though, right at the end. Oh, perfect. Yes. So it starts off going back, finishing up Dark King Vern and Die fighting, which takes up about eight minutes of the episode. More or less the... Oh, fucking hell. So King Vern did his transformation, became one with uh, Ultron, and started beating the shit out of Die. And Die is... And I forgot to mention this last week, but back when I said that Die stabbed Vern and threw the chest with his sword, like five episodes ago, that sword's been in Vern for five episodes. <laughs> okay. And it's still in him at the end of this. So, Die's getting slapped around and all everything, and he's just like, if I can get my sword, I can win this. And he's just getting slapped around, and Vern's, Vern finally gives him a nice final punch, sends him to the ground, and he's like, ha, I finally won! And he's taking a victory lap and just from nowhere, literally nowhere, comes Baron's sword. Oh my his, god. His father's sword comes from fucking nowhere, lands in front of Die. Die is passed the fuck out. And Vern's just like, all right, the fuck? And he's just like, okay, I'm... he's still there. I need to completely crush him to nothing and pulp. But before he can do it, without fail, with that sword there, the literal son comes to die's fucking rescue. Oh my god, no. <laughs> the thing that Vern wanted, it literally rises up from the horizon. Because they've been fighting literally for an entire day now. Rises up, hits the blade, it gleams off it, waking die up, and he's just like, huh? And his mother, it takes the form of his mother. <laughs> the spirit of his mother that he has never seen is taken by the sword. And he stands up, and the spirit of his father shows up and like, Die. Your mother saw this was only like the sun. There's only one thing to do. And how many over here like, Barn, your soul went to the other world. Why are you here, man? But Die and Barn have one last talk, and Die takes up the, the sword, his father's sword, and his mother's memory, and manages one final attack to... Fight, burn, a couple slashes here, counters, whatnot. Eventually, there's some high-flying stuff, and he eventually gets to Vern, grabs his sword, and just cuts him straight down the middle. And then he passes the fuck out and falls from the sky. <sighs> okay. All right. So, we go back to everyone else who's gathered up at the bottom going like, Is it over? It's like, there's something falling from the sky. What is it? It's die. They run over, Pop catches them, they have their moment of Is he dead? Then he opens his eyes. Oh, he's not dead. Yay, cool. Everyone's celebrating, yada yada yada. And lo and behold, Kilvern returns. Comes from the other side of the fucking castle. It walks off, he's like, Well, thank you all for killing Vern. And uh, it's like, Well shit. He got his head cut off. I guess he can't die. Only to reveal that Kilvern was a mechanical golem this entire time. And his little henchman on his shoulder was the actual Kilvern. And inside Miss Kilvern's face is a black core. The bomb, a smaller version of the bomb that was going to blow up the entire planet. And he has now set it off to explode with everyone right there. But he gets slapped around within two minutes. As ever, he does his whole spiel of, well, I actually served the dragon, yada yada, here's this bomb, I'm a piece out. He literally gets slapped the fuck down after doing explaining his whole plan. They so freeze the bomb. it was completely pointless while that happened. Correct. He gets stabbed, he gets uh... thrown to the ground, they capture him, then fucking pop and die, take the Kilvern golem, and fly it in the air to get the bomb away from everyone. The actual Kilvern, the little puppet guy, he disappears in smoke. It didn't really say whether he was dead or he just escaped. He just, poof, gone. Um, then Die and Pop have a moment of the where they're taking the bomb up in the air, and Pop's just like, if, I'm, if we're going to die, I'm glad I get to die with you, Die. Die's just like, yeah, Pop, this is my moment. Kicks fucker off the golem and takes it away by himself. And Pop's just like, why die? We were friends! 
Dai goes off, takes his last sacrifice for the world, and blows the fuck up. And saves everyone from the bomb. Everyone has a moment. Like, not Dai. Then it goes in the future. Everyone's healed up and whatnot. They have a moment and all this fun stuff of where they're making him a grave and everything. It's just like, he's gone! He's fucking gone! And so I was like, but he's not gone. It's like, what do you mean? You see that damn gem on his sword? It's still lit. That means he's alive somewhere. If he was dead, it would disappear. So you're telling me Die's not dead? No! I'll always be waiting, Die. End credits. After scene, then credits. <laughs> Time has passed. It's just showing everyone just living around the world, doing whatever. People are adventuring, being queens and whatnot. Um, their master, who died at the beginning of the series, but came back in a ex machina, is now a king of a country with the princess who fell in love with him when he was the hero. Leona's holding out for Dai to come back and marry her whenever that happens. Um, Ma'am, Pop, and Mariel are having a triangle love story traveling the world. The animal group is building their own fortress. More or less just every, the world is at peace. Now we're just doing whatever. And then there's just a nice grave with Dai's sword waiting for him whenever he shows back up. If this... That was the end of Dragon Quest Dai. If there's a sequel, we're not recover. We're not reviewing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just setting that precedence right now. <laughs> so overall, how do you feel about this series? I mean, overall, I mean, it was aight. If it wasn't for the show, I would have never watched it. I feel that. But it's aight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Now we never now we never have to talk about it ever again. That's not true. Besides references, but we don't have to actually talk about it. That's not true. That is true. It's bl it's we'll blacklisted from this show. I don't want to hear the words dragon and quest in the same phrasing ever again. Well, if you're in for a surprise in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do Chainsaw Man next, episode okay. three. Uh, th so this was the episode uh, focusing on the Bat Devil, which, you know, I saw a comment on Twitter, right, about Chainsaw Man, the anime, that I relate to so heavily, where it's just like the fun of being a Chainsaw Man fan and watching the show is not remembering anything that happened and watching the show, because that's yes. me. <laughs> totally me. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. <laughs> This, that is completely fucking true. Dude, dude, this series is like a fucking fever dream, okay? Like, I, I, I don't know anything that happens. It is! Even with part two that's currently going on in the manga, it's still a fever dream! Like, I don't know anything that... So, like, this was the Bat Devil episode, where it's like Power had the cat, whatever, that she befriended, and the bat ate it. You remember? Yeah, I remember the cat. I don't remember it being eaten, but, yeah, the, I mean, it makes sense. The bat ate it, and then Power's just like, you know, I know whenever, you know, Dingy, I know when you talked about Portia, you're like, you know, you had that feeling of where you can never pet him again. I now know what that feels like. And then he, the bat's just like, yoink, eat. <laughs> and Power just like, whatever, just eat me, I guess. <laughs> just lets it happen. I, I do remember that, because, yeah, she became, like, super... Depressed, and Dingy yep. has to save her, right? Yeah, well, did she was gonna, like, sacrifice Dingy. You know, to try to get the cat back. Yeah. You know, they had a little moment right outside the before the they went into the building where, like, you know, he's saying how he doesn't want to use his chainsaws because they, he just loses a lot of blood and it gets messy. So, like, she goes to use, like, her blood hammer. He just uses the random axe that he's carrying around. She gets a good little smack on him. And basically just kind of show, you know, showing to him that, you know, hey, I'm actually, like, I'm an asshole is what power was basically showcasing to Dingy just then that she was willing to sacrifice him for it, whatever. But after power gets eaten and the bat devil, you know, it's just like, all right, I'm gonna go eat a lot of other people. Dingy grabs onto the leg of the bat. Right. And it's just like biting its leg, eating the bat's blood. And the first thing that he yells is give me back them titties is the first thing that Dingy fucking yells as he's flying across the air. Yeah. And I do want to say there was other things that happened earlier in the episode. I just feel like this is the meat of it. Like I, the only other thing in the early in the episode that I feel like is a good thing to note is for people that are just watching this show for the first time and experiencing this series for the first time, uh, they already got a very clear hint more than we already have. 
about how threatening and powerful Makima is. Because whenever Makima was talking to Dingy and Power about the mess they made in episode two, Power was trying to pawn it off on Dingy like it was Dingy. Oh, he told me to do it. He told me to do it. And then Makima told Power to shut up, and Power just immediately just like cowered and stayed quiet. And meanwhile, Dingy's like, what the hell just happened? You know, he doesn't get he doesn't he doesn't get it. He doesn't get how just threatening and powerful Machmi is. So you're getting those little tidbit hints there, right? Um <clears throat> But you know, anyway, back to him hanging on to the bat, you know, uh the bat's just trying to shake him off, whatever. Dingy ends up going chainsaw for him, cuts his wings in, in the sky for the bat. It's like, Oh my god, you were a devil too. They start fighting in the city and stuff. Uh, you know, at one point, like the, the bat throws a car at Dingy. Dingy catches it, and it's just you know the bat's mocking him for wanting to be a, a hero, essentially by saving that guy that's in the car, right? And uh, yes. Dingy's like, "You think I give a shit about this guy?" And just yeets the car at the bat devil. The guy jumps oh, out God. before he hits the bat, but either way, it's showing that he doesn't give a shit. And then, like my by far my favorite part of this episode, because again, this is all stuff that I do not remember. I mean, I just don't. This is a long time ago when I read this shit. And like I said, the whole series is just a fucking fever dream. It's just a lot of what the fucks. I don't know what happened in this series, honestly. Um, you know, it was it was done so well in the anime where it's like, you know, Dingy got like blown back, whatever. And he, you know, it's that heroic moment of the, her- you know, the hero, the protagonist standing up to the villain, you know, that sort of vibe, right? True shonen fashion. And what was, it was so good because like, he looked like a badass, like his shirt was ripped. There was blood, you know, stained on his shirt and stuff. Like he just looked like a badass. He's doing a slow walk up a hill. You know, uh, he, he also found out in this fight that he can retract his chainsaws. He didn't know he could do that. Um, you know, he gets up to the top. Epic music is playing. You know, his shirt's flowing in the wind. Real badass moment, right? Something you would put as a wallpaper. Like Goku going Super Saiyan for the first time. One of those moments, you know what I mean? Of just our hero is here. And he starts yelling to the sky. He's like, I just want a cop of feel. I just want some titties. And I'm just I like. I do remember that. Oh, did you, my guy. You were just a very relatable human being. <laughs> Does that remember correctly? Doesn't after you saving power, he, she's like, oh, what, what yeah. would you want? He literally just asked her, can I cop a feel? Yeah, and she lets him play with her tits while he's. She's sitting on the toilet, but they were they were just they were fake boobs. She's like, ha, you think I'd actually let you touch my tits? You pervert. You know, she had fake tits in there to, you know, to trick them. That's what happened. But not in this episode, of course. That's what will happen, I guess. Spoiler. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's just like that epic build up all for him to start yelling about how he wants to, you know, because like even with that epic build up, like the bat throws like a rock at him and he's just like Phew! just like epic samurai slice it, you know? All yeah. this epicness, all just for him screaming about how he wants to grab some tits. Exactly. Yeah, this is Chainsaw Man. This is this that is, will be somebody's wallpaper. Yeah, this is Chainsaw Man, dude. I mean, it, it, it was his sole goal is to get laid. Literally, that is his entire goal. I love how Josh pointed out once upon a time that like all these protagonists have all these, you know, honorable goals. Like you know, Austin wants to be the Wizard King. You know, Deku wants to be the number one hero. You know. um, uh, Naruto wanted to be Hokage, you know, just all that shit, right? Tr- trademark, like, I want to be the best, or I want to save people, or do whatever. And the ninja's like, I just want to get laid, man. Give me some sex, give me some titties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ninja's completely relatable. I mean, he had nothing, was just doing yep. shit jobs, just doing whatever to get food, and yeah, he never been with a woman, touched a woman before. He's like, I want to do this before I die. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, he's living a very, like, uh, He's living a, like, what, a very normal, like, mediocre life, you know, for a person, yeah. right? But he's just like, this is the dream. This is my dream because of where he came from. You know, he's just a really relatable, relatable guy, man. He just has normal goals in life that people have. But, I mean, it was a fun episode. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I also really enjoyed this My Hero episode as well, uh, season yeah, six. Yeah, My episode Hero episode four. was really good. Yep. You got, you got some nice sprinkles of some really big shit coming later on in this season, this episode with Hawks and, uh, and Dobby. Yeah. With, uh, you know, who are you, whatever, you know, got some nice sprinkles there about, uh, about stuff to come. And you know, funny enough, Zach, whenever I said Dobby, I actually almost said his real name. <laughs> yeah. I almost, said, yeah. I almost said his real name just then. that. That's going to be bad for live shows. I'm going to say it right now. That's going to be the only downside with live shows. I am so sorry. For spoilers that I accidentally say and not even think about it. <laughs> because that will happen. That will one million percent happen. I don't know if you saw it, but 
I just saw in the background the entire episode of just the slow reach that is over the Reaper's hand. The Reaper's hand? Yes. Well, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, took me a minute to realize what you were talking about. I was going to say, I wasn't joking last episode. It's about to get bad. <laughs> oh, it's about to get very, very bad. Yeah, no, this season's about to take off, man. We already got to see um, what at first appeared to be like, you know, they tried to basically make it where Shigaraki wouldn't get out. Miriko did. Really, she took some serious ass damage. I actually forgot just how extensive of damage she took. You know, I didn't. Miracle gets fucked yeah, up. Yeah, she does get fucked up, dude. Well, because like you know, where when when you see her here in the manga, like you know, she's fine. Now, granted, she has some extra stuff on her, you know, part of her outfit to help give her support. But I forgot to just what extent she gets fucked up. It's bad. She got yeah, fucked no. up bad. Miracle's a crazy bitch, dude. She's intense. She's here for it. She's gonna throw down, no matter what the cost, dude. Um, dude, she had a fan base when it was just in the manga. Now that's animated. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, I know it's growing. It's massive right now on Twitter. Um, but no, she had she had some pretty sweet moments in here. You know, got really fucked up trying to basically break Shigaraki's tube. You know, where hopefully he won't wake up. Whenever he does fall out, he's got no heartbeat. But obviously, he's waking up. You know, we already he already had some nice flashbacks where he he had that moment where he could have chosen a different side. You know what I mean? When yeah. we were showing that that dream sequence of him, you know, where you got to see his family and stuff. He, he had that moment to choose a side, and obviously, with how far deep he is in this, chose his obvious side of where he feels very content with, um, you know, going with um, all for one. Um, what else happened in this episode? I mean, we got the Miracle stuff, her fighting to the break over Shigaraki stuff. Hawk's getting we fucked up the... brutally. Yeah, Hawks and Dobby. We got the high end no moose fighting everyone else like That's right. yeah, Cross, yeah. Yeah. X Less, yep. Erasure, all of them sort of mentally becoming more aware and awakened. Which is fascinating to actually see versus read it. Yes. We got the Shigaraki thing. We also got the doctor backstory between him and All for One and that yeah. they're really meant to kidnap Eraser and not their friend. Oh, yeah, because President Mike got him. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah, and he also went into a little bit of the backstory about how he wrote that book, whatever, X amount of years ago. But everyone viewed it as nonsense because how it was like 120 years ago or whatever it was. And it was a theory of how the world was coming, going to be destroyed before getting rebuilt again. Yeah. During exactly. a time when they were trying to build up the society as a everything safe and sound. Yeah, with, Kurt, with uh, the quirk uh, singularity and everything. Mm-hmm. Which we've now come see completely come flourishing throughout the series, which is how other people's quirks work. Yes, because you know the whole theory, of course, based on just like you know reproduction, just more quirks mixing together. So, yeah, and besides that, it was just a couple things of the UA kids being taken away by the fat taxi. Yeah, that that's trademark fat taxi. <laughs> <laughs> and um. What's his name? Big Giganto waiting for the call. Oh, yeah, he's just staring at the little radio, waiting to, waiting to hear Master's voice. Yes. Uh -huh. No, it was but a, mostly a just solid episode. Focusing on the Nomu stuff and the team trying to get to Miracle. Yeah, and then that, you know, I would say it's that and, you know, a nice little sprinkle on Hawks and Dobby. Which, uh, and then we got that again, nice little end shot of Shigaraki later. being uh, shocked back into life with Exlis chilling there. Yep. Ooh, the, the destruction that's about to come. <laughs> oh, man, the destruction that's about to come. No, good episode, though. Very good episode. I'm so, God, I'm so damn excited for, you know, some uh, some big events to come here in the very near future. Dude, this season's going to be so good. Um, Where do you want to go from here? You want to hit uh, Spy Family, Blue Lock, Gundam, or Bleach? That's it, Spy Family, because, I mean... This was a two-part episode. The first part was... I enjoyed the first part because how they decided to just frame and everything. Because I'm pretty sure they did in the manga as well, but with the music and everything, it made it so much better of just framing it like it was a horror series for like the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Which was just a great touch for me. If I cut fingers, the red bat egg, or yep. just overshadowed eyes. All to learn cooking. Yep. All just trying to learn how to cook. <laughs> 
Yeah, whenever <laughs> whenever the episode first started and it was like, oh, yours home late or whatever, and you know, and she comes back like kind of injured stuff. I I completely forgot that she was trying to learn how to cook. I forgot about that. So I was like, oh damn, are we already about to get the thing where he wants to take her out on dates and stuff? Like, is that what we're about oh. to get? <laughs> Nope, I remember this because, yeah, it's the whole revealing of Yuri's weird sense of taste. Oh, yeah, where he's just like, oh, I'm seeing light. <laughs> I'm seeing my light. Oh, it's flash great. My <laughs> it's great. I need more. But you're vomiting. <laughs> it's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That was that was great. That was fantastic. But it all so, yeah, worked just... out. She learned how to cook something. That's all that matters. Yeah, she learned how to cook a meal. Her mother used to make them. Managed to successfully cook it for Lloyd and Anya. And then, then she cooked the dessert. dessert. Yeah, I, that was such a quick transition. I lo- I laughed so hard at that quick transition where it's like, I, I made a dessert. It's an original recipe by me. And then you just kind of look at it. The next shot, there's on the floor. <laughs> it looks fine. It just looks like a giant brown caramel turd on a plate. Yeah, it reminds me of... Um, uh takina's dessert and like chorus recoil that she made she was so proud of it literally looked like a turd and <laughs> everyone else realized it but her and they were advertising on social media on their social media like oh you know we got this new dessert and everyone just went to go get it because it looked like poop but takina didn't realize that <laughs> <laughs> and once she realized she didn't want to make it anymore <laughs> oh but no Spy family was good we had the second half which was uh scruffy Dude, trying to get Lloyd yeah. to help him and getting a date. Yep. It's where he's just going over all the details, and Lloyd's like, you're a stalker. What is wrong with you? <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, you do the same thing. He's like, yeah, it's for my job. Not to pick up women. <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> Only for him to fail and bring up the bromance that is Lloyd and Frankie. Uh, and him. I can't remember Frankie. his name. Frankie. Yeah. Yeah, Frankie. You know, at the bar together and just drinking away their problems. <laughs> yeah. That's a great bromance. I love that bromance, dude. And it's a nice touch, just Lloyd being soonery about it and just not, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Basically. Basically. <laughs> he's so far into this mission, he's just like, I really don't know what I'm doing at this point. Like, I'm going to be real. <laughs> oh, it's like, he, it's like, you know, even at the point where we are in the manga, he has such a long road ahead still, you know, yes. for this overarching story. So, like, you know, and you continue to see that at multiple points throughout the series of him just being like, God, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> oh, which is funny, which is very entertaining character interactions. I'm just waiting for, because I think we might see it in this season, his first encounter with Becky and how she suddenly becomes a sea lord. Oh, I know, I know. She just come, <laughs> becomes like the biggest fangirl for Lloyd. Oh, that's that's great, yeah. I just want to see, like I've already talked about, I just want to see those dates. The dates with, where she got shot in the ass. That's what I want to see. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is so, so funny. Those chapters crack me up. That's what I want to see this season. Give me that at least. Season two, give me the boat. Give me the that really good backstory and whatever else happens. I don't remember. Been a, little, been a little bit since it's a bi-weekly series and all, but no, nah, I mean, 16 was solid. It was solid. Lots of good laughs. That's the main thing. Lots of good laughs. Good humor. I'm here for it. Uh, You want to talk about Gundam? What happened in episode four? So Gundam was sort of interesting. So went more into the whole students politics because so Eerie won and it starts off with the whole guy asks her to marry him, and she just straight up refuses him, and runs away. And ever, and the best part is that this duel was broadcast live, so everyone's saw it. She's like, that's the first time I've seen someone propose, and that's the first time I've seen someone get rejected. <laughs> and then the whole school makes it a big deal of rumors going, well, what's between them? Is it just and like the one of the girls, Choo Choo is her name. She's pink hair, giant freaking puff balls uh, and hair. She's part of the Earthian group who she just absolutely hates Spacians because they're Spacians and while all this fun stuff. She just throws the duels like, oh, it's just a louder spat. Glad they have time to just waste on this. And then it just becomes an episode of the aftermath of the duel, the guy apologizing to 
I think her name's Mirren, who's Eerie's fiance since Eerie's the top holder and whatnot. Him losing everything because his father takes it all away because he's a disappointment to his father now. And him more or less going from the top to more or less becoming a bottom. It's probably going to be a whole character building thing through all this with him. Uh, Eerie trying to find a mechanic and a spotter so she can complete a test because the teachers at this school are just complete assholes is all I see from this episode because they set up this date for this test and everything and Eerie walks up to it and they're just like they're in a Saleta. Ready? Alright, you fail. He's like, what? You don't have a spotter or mechanic. That's insta-fail. And I'm just thinking, no one fucking told her? <laughs> they just let her walk up there? It's just like, well, if they don't show up, she's just gonna fail. So she gets immediately failed because of that and spends the episode trying to find a mechanic and spotter. She meets the Earthen group and whatnot, all of them. Choo Choo shows up and gets super mad just because a Spacian's there, starts breaking shit, yelling at her to kick her out. And we get a little backstory with, of the politics of the Earth and sort of rioting or protesting on Earth because all the Spacians are taking over the factories and whatnot and what things and more or less they're more or less using their Earthian people as free labor, more or less, not giving them good rights and things like that, all that fun stuff. And more or less, Choo Choo's trying to be this rising star for the Earthians and the Academy and whatnot, and in turn because of her upbringing, just because how the space treat her, she treats the space scenes the same way regardless of the person himself. Is more or less what it stacks out to. There was also a thing with her with her uh, test where some mean girls apparently sprayed some slow reacting spray that completely just black lights the sensors so she couldn't see anything. We'll come back to that. Because she fills out her test because of that and then all this whole stuff happens between Choo Choo and Eerie. Uh, eventually, Eerie ends up with her fiance, and more or less, fiance like, "Well, why didn't you ask me? I can help you. I can be the mechanic and the spotter. It's just for this one thing. I can do both." Eerie's good with that. Makeup test comes up. Choo Choo's there. She's got to make it up. Eerie's got to make it up. But the mean girls strike again and have now put the slow acting spray on Eerie's machine. So Eerie starts starts going, and then her entire sensor gets blacked out. Instead of quitting, um. Mirren more or less tells her, doesn't matter if you fail, we can restart the test as many times as we want. And literally they call it out, it's like, can we take a break? There's machine trouble. And the teacher goes, well, it's your responsibility to do a free test checkup. So you're fucked. Keep going. And then it's just forcing her to constantly redo this test, completely blind. She can't take any moment to clear it off. She just has to keep doing it or just absolutely fail the test. These professors are fucking pricks. <laughs> like, straight up. They're just like, all right. And the entire time, so it's just Eerie doing this, the girl, mean girl's watching it, laughing about this, Choo Choo seeing it the entire time. And eventually it goes to the point where Eerie just starts breaking down. She's just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go home. And just starts breaking down, crying and everything. And for some reason, uh, Choo Choo talked to Mira and was like, can y'all please get out the field so I can do my test? And Mira's just like, Fuck off, we're doing this till we're done. And because of that, she also hears Eerie crying about this and whatnot, how she feels and things like that, finding out that Eerie's similar to Choo Choo and goals and whatnot, and Choo Choo's fun, like, she has enough. She gets out of her mech, goes to the mean girl, and socks the shit out of him. <laughs> like, straight up, socks the shit out of him, starts, first girl, she's like, what are you doing? Choo, out. And Choo Choo starts fighting the other girl, and I'm... The professors, can, the teachers who are supervising can see this. They don't do jack shit. They just let it happen. So it just ends up being Choo Choo fighting this other girl. Eerie and the rest showing up to try and pull them apart. Eerie gets punched because of it. Finally knock out the other girl. They just have a nice little meeting and whatnot of uh, Nika, one of the other girls who's a mechanic, who's sort of been nice to Eerie this entire time. She's like, oh, Eerie, why don't you join the Earth Clan? Everyone's sort of like, uh... And she looks at Choo Choo's like, well, you're not a complete waste. And allows her to join. So Eerie joins up with the Earthen clan. Or, yeah, family. Overall heartwarming. I was not expecting. 
expecting the freaking just straight clocking of the girls, though. <laughs> yeah, they throw, they already throw down. It was it like it was so nice because just bam. Yeah, I've I, I've only watched the prologue, like I already mentioned, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the episodes now. I mean, so far they've all been very good. It is a different bit of a contrast from the prologue to what we are getting now, because we're going from the space stuff and playing it to just the academy stuff and a little bit of hints in there of stuff, other stuff going on outside of the academy. Right. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to checking it out. Uh, I did enjoy the prologue quite a bit, so. Uh, do you want to talk about Two Year Eternity or before we get to Blue Lock and Bleach? I mean, I can, yeah. Yeah, Two Year Eternity, I mean, Season <laughs> 2, Episode 1. How are we feeling on this show? Should I watch it? I mean, yeah, because we're going to get a lot of good stuff because it's going to go all the way up into the war. Okay, yeah, that's pretty solid content then. Um, so... God, it's been so long since I fucking read that series. Yes. But <laughs> we, we're gonna get a lot out we of the second that, season. We dropped that it sh- so long ago. Because it's... Sh- because in the opening and then the endings... Uh... Ending stuff, it shows very significant characters that are involved in the war and, and all that fun stuff. Okay, gotcha. Um... But yeah, no, the f- and also with the opening, the opening animation still looks fucking fantastic, and they couldn't find a better song, so they kept the same song. It's a solid song. It very it fits the atmosphere right, of the it, series it is so the much. Same song. It's the exact same song. Okay, I'm here for that. I mean, and it fits the atmosphere of the series great. So. Okay, I'm here for that. Um, so it picks up where Fushi has been chilling on that island for forty years. So it's now old looking, white haired kid. Yep, with the beard and everything. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, he didn't have a beard, but he was shaggy. Oh, okay. Okay. Not. I'm thinking. I guess beard's a different time. Got it. No, I guess it was beard. Yeah, he did have a beard. My bad. Okay. Uh, him spending forty years on the island. He spent two years in the ocean as different sea creatures. The black clad figures just being like here as a tool for information. <laughs> right. Uh, more or less goes in the backstory of how these over these years, Fushi's just been fighting the Nokers as they show up on the island and then turning them into jerky. Uh, we do get to see the fishing village attacked by Nokers and Fushi being told Nokers are attacking a place and him going like, well, we need to go. He's like, it's a month's travel. By the time you get there, it's be done with. He's like, well, people could be dying. People are already dying. <laughs> it's so true. So yeah. true. Um... So, uh, yeah, we get to see that, the Nokers attacking that village at the opening, Fushi and the island and whatnot. We do get to see adult Tonri and, uh, oh, I forget the other guy's name. The medical kid. I from the island with everyone. I cannot I remember his name remember. for the life of me right now. I do not remember. Been but we get to long. see adult versions of them. Um, Fushi gets found by the Guardians and Hayase's granddaughter who is the reincarnation of Hayase and is super like Fushi I'm here to protect you love me <laughs> just rolling up to him start hugging on his legs like heard you were night person and we did get that lovely moment from the manga where he's just like so what happened to Hayase well grandmother was dead before I was alive ha she died <laughs> 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 her just saying, well, that's not very nice. I was like, she killed two of my friends. She was a bitch. Fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And more or less, the mo- later half of the episode is more or less Fushi's interaction with uh, Hayami and the Guardians and more or less him coming to the realization of like, yeah, Hayami's part of the Hi- Hayasa's family, but she's not Hayase. And then the Black's like, she's a reincarnation. So she is sort of Hayase, but she's ha- Hame. You figured out, Fushi. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like, interact with her. Maybe you'll get to understand and get rid of that feeling of disgust and whatnot. And just sort of slowly see that interaction with Fushi and whatnot reveals that her Hayase, Hayame's family's been passing that Noker 
from the end of the first season along yeah. from person to person because it's in her left arm. Yep. So gross. And all that. F- yeah. Just that giant lump on there. That giant tumor. Yes. And more or less, so she's like, you should get rid of that. The entire episode's like, we should really get rid of that. We should really just kill this thing. <laughs> um, eventually, he makes it to the village. Hayami and the other guardians offers to go down and check on him for Fushi since he's worried about Noker showing up. He's starting to like her more. And while he's chilling and waiting, Tonri, the bird, and medical kid show up and start talking with Fushi, pretending like, since he doesn't recognize them, pretending that they're not who they are and revealing that, yeah, you're pretty famous. There's tales about you and whatnot. And then those Guardians freaks are just constantly wanting to preach to anyone and get new believers about you. Eventually, Hayami coach shows back up. They have their interaction. They have a meal together. And we have the nice little face-off of Hayami and Tonari sort of talking and they'll reveal that Tonari is immune to all poisons. <laughs> Because Hayami tries to do the old trick that happened to Fushi and group back in like real early on right. of the meadows and the tea that knocked them all out. Yep. And Tonari's just chilling, drinking, and she's like, hmm, can I get another? <laughs> they bring her a Lotus Bane tea. She drinks it. Oh, that's Lotus Bane tea. That's actually quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, in about like half a minute, I should pass out. Then within like 30 minutes, I should die. They're just chatting and whatnot, and it's like, yeah, it's, that's about 30 seconds. Feel great. I was, and Mila goes, get her, and her guards just fall, and the bird shows up. <laughs> it's like, and it just reveals, your tonery of Jada. Shout and that's how it ends. Shout out to tonery, man. Tonery was such a great character. It is such a great character. I mean, she's an alright character when she's young and helping Fushi on the island and everything in that group, but adult Tonery is amazing. Yes. Yes. Love Tonery. Tonery and Gugu are both fantastic characters. My favorite character is still the bear. Oh, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Piss off with the bear. All right. That bear is an MVP. (laughs) All right. I'll hit Bleach and we can finish out with Blue Lock. Uh, so this week with Bleach, uh, yeah, we're still in Huko Mundo right now. You know, we're getting a nice little, um, showdown between Bleach, uh, uh, between Ichigo. I don't know why I almost called him Bleach, as if that's his his name, like Bleach, like it's like Naruto or something. You know, you know what the bad thing is, is like a lot of people did that with Ichigo, would call him Bleach, like people calling Ling Zelda. Right, yeah. No, we get a nice, we get, we, it starts off with a little bit of a showdown between that, that high prim and proper Quincy, as I will call him, just the way that he talks and presents himself, you know, like very high class, uh, you know, nice little throwdown between, uh, him and each go and each go, you know, dodging some attacks and immediately asking, it's just like, wait, are you quit? And he gets cut off in the, in the, uh, the high class Quincy. It's like, <laughs> if you really don't know who we are, then that's even worse on you. He's like, I will answer your question. Yes, we are exactly who you think we are, you know, and he's got a sword and he turns his sword into a bow, which is, you know, nice, nice, like the hilt essentially sticks out like a bow and starts firing, yeah. which is pretty sick. And each go even makes a comment on that, that he thought that ever, you know, every Quincy only used bows and like ranged weapons and shit like that. So uh, the thing that about this episode that was just like 10 out of 10, even though it ultimately obviously amounted to nothing, but it was still just like in the moment, like 10 out of 10. So think of Avengers, right? Okay. Think of the Avengers movie, 2012, a historic film in cinema history. And think of the historic scene that everyone loves of Hulk just beating the shit out of Loki, right? Picture yeah. that. Yeah, that happened in this episode, but times a hundred, and it was awesome. So, like, <laughs> uh, you know, the Anna, you know, the Anacars that uh, this, you know, high class Quincy thought he already took out, right? You know, they kind of get back up, kind of get back into the fight after Ichigo in true Ichigo fashion gets blown back, and in the process, that one of them summon, you know, has like a has like a large bulking creature with him, right? And he just picks up the dude, this Quincy, and just starts beating him on the ground continuously. Beating him in the oh. ground. He's like bent backwards. It's like his neck's broken stuff. Like, and all I saw 
was Hulk and Loki times 100. And it was hilarious. Obviously, it ultimately meant nothing. You know, once uh, he find like once he finally stops beating his ass into the ground, just throwing him around like a rag doll, like a toy. You know, you see like just his uh, his upper body in the ground, his legs just kind of flop back, <laughs> and he ends up just getting up. His neck's broke, and he just tr- snaps it back into place <laughs> like it's no big fucking deal that he just got completely bones broken, whatever. Uh, and then he well, starts using. Quincy's are supposed to be like just regular humans. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, that's why it's just like, okay, you know, let's not just pretend like they're not supposed to be regular people and stuff. Uh, he then uses, like, he also, in this process, uses, like, the Quincy ultimate power, you know, that Uru has used before as well, right? Uh, which yeah. is, like, the glove or whatever that he had. You know, this dude did the same thing. He used the ultimate power, got, like, nice blue, like, angel-esque wings and, you know, other cosmetic-esque blue glowing things of, like, uh, Reishi, whatever I think is what they call it. Because they, they referenced it in this episode, like Reishi or something like that. Reishi levels. I don't know. They, they talked. I don't remember. All right. Look, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but either I'll way. I'm just going to picture now Roshi levels. There you go. Um, you know, so he's about to. He basically activates like a crown on his head, right? And when he activates his crown, it just starts like sucking up the life all around them. Like you literally see that like, one, like. You know, Orihime has like her barrier up, or you see the barrier. It sucks like life and energy, right? So you see like the barrier yeah. start getting ripped away. You even start to see like like flakes come off of people. Like you see like flakes like come off of her arm or, or like Chad's face and stuff. You know, uh, but then Icho comes up and just stops it immediately. Or he go, he has his bonkai and just smacks the crown and shatters it and just stops the whole like it's almost like a vacuum, just sucking everything in. Um, so that fight is kind of paused though. So like, that's kind of the end of that fight that we have for the moment. We'll follow back up on that. Uh, cause you know, we get a nice little comedic shot with, uh, Orihara. So that was cool. Always great to see him. You know, you get to also further even more than we've already seen in the manga and the anime is how in tune and in touch he is. Cause even though he's in Huko Mundo, you see the moment where he like immediately turns like, Oh, what's that? And then it brings us to the Soul Society. So he immediately sensed shit was about to pop off in the Soul Society. Because uh, while Ichigo is fighting this Quincy, like the, this head Quincy guy, which I have no idea what his name is, because even in the manga, I stopped reading before his name got revealed. Uh, I literally made to this arc and pretty much stopped because I was waiting for the anime and I did get burnt out. Uh, so right now he's just, you know, his majesty. Because that even gets referenced in this episode with, you know, uh, Uru, where he's trying to dig up information on these potential Quincy's that, you know, that he doesn't know that are a thing or not. And he's like digging through his dad's study. His dad yells at him. Like, I told you not to go in here or whatever that my permission. Uru then, you know, he, he gives Uru a hint where it's just like the information that you're looking for is not here. You know, he's still looking through books and stuff. Can't find shit. He thinks about it. He goes to his dad's study, his personal study, finds a book all about the Quincy's. And even there, Uru's just like, you know, you know, did you know about all this, including the one that calls himself, you know, his majesty, whatever. So his name's still not revealed yet. And like I said, I just don't know what it is. I, I didn't read that far into the arc whenever I read through Bleach very quickly. Uh, so he gets the news that this Quincy is fighting Ichigo, which Ichigo is considered a special threat. Uh, so he's just like, <laughs> all right, let's go fuck up Soul Society then. Let's go, boys. Let's ro- let's roll up to the school. Let's roll up to the club. And uh, that's essentially what happened for the rest of this episode was the Quincy's rolling up to the club and fucking everyone up in a brutal capacity. Like, in this episode, it, you know, it was also nice for, you know, to get that further detail of why the uh, Soul Reapers and Quincy's hate each other. Where it's like the Soul Reapers, they take out hollows to bring them back to Soul Society to create a balance between the living world and the Soul Society, Right. Where it's like, if the living world has too many souls, or if the soul society has too many souls, it's going to off-balance each other and just end up destroying each other, right? Meanwhile, the Quincy's, while, yes, they're trying to kill hollows just like the soul reapers, the Quincy's are flat out just killing hollows. Point blank, period. There is no soul to return to soul society. So it's going to end up being soul society is going to have a lot less souls while the living world is going to continue to go up. So you, you did get the kind of the breakdown of why exactly they hate each other, you know, as being explained by like one member of, I think like the third division or something. I don't remember. Uh, and then, you know, they were, they were at one of the gates and she's like, Oh, it's fine. You know, we got S- squad 11 on the other side of the gate. We're good. And then there's a huge explosion of flame, like blue flames. It's like, Oh, huh. You know, squad 11 is always heralded as the fighting squad, yep. but 
in any kind of arc, there's only like three people that matter in Squad Eleven. Everyone else are just like normal thugs. Basically. You know? Got this, you know, giant blue flame that kind of appears, and you just see like these Quincy's pop up. You see like three people attempt to use their Bonkai, right? And uh one of them as he attempts to use it gets like entire part of his body just blown off and it's very it's very well animated right where it's it's very detailed of just like of how it quickly it gets blown off and how quickly these guys are just being picked off because see another quincy just come up with like a finger gun and just goes boop and you see a head explode <laughs> you see a soul reaper's head just pop so i mean these, these guys are getting fucked up immediately and the episode does end with that uh, you know, next episode is going to be really sick because it's going to be the one where we see all the captains throw down and basically every captain, including Kenny, get their shit wrecked. So that's going to be cool. I'm here for that. And then we're going to get the super epic shot of Ichigo standing in the rain that was heavy in promotion material just for him to go get his shit slapped. <laughs> Look, I know I, that's not even a spoiler at this point. Like, a number one series has been done for a long time. Number two, even if you are strictly an anime-only viewer, no matter what, and you've never read this arc, you know how Bleach goes. <laughs> you know how Bleach goes. He's about to get his shit wrecked because he does. Speaking of Bleach, you think after these four parts finish, you think Kubo will ever make that second part to that one shoot off he gave us like the beginning of the year i feel like he will on his own terms though oh it's always on his own terms terms because kubo gives no fucks about anything else yep not anymore he did his successful weekly series he don't give a shit now <laughs> other than he, that he as long as uh, my high school family continues he'll be happy yeah <laughs> oh my god that series i can't believe it's still a thing it was it saved by chapters. kubo Yo, it was saved by Kubo, my high school family, man. If you haven't heard about this, it's a uh, weekly series in Shonen Jump right now. And its sales are, I'm telling you, they're axe worthy. We have seen other series, new series that are pretty entertaining with the same sa sales levels as high school f family and have been axed. High school family has continuously dodged the axe at every possible turn. And I'm telling you right now, when that was when that happened, was right after Kubo came out and like things like these are my top three favorite series in Weekly Shonen Jump. This one, this one, a High School Family. After that, High School Family was able to dodge everything. Like yeah, this, High School Family had a hundred chapters. I've never read it, obviously, but the sales are not good, man. They won't like. There's times they won't even break 10k. Like that's bad for a Shonen Jump series. That's bad. Not even 10K, man, and it's still alive. All thanks to Kubo. Literally, all thanks to Kubo. <laughs> okay. And if it's not thanks to Kubo, that's shocking, but... That's also true, yeah. If it's not thanks to Kubo, that is very shocking. All right, let's finish up anime chat with Blue Lock. So, end of last episode, we brought us into the setting up for this game for our mm -hmm. Z team versus the X team. Yeah, I think it was X team. Yes. They, they weren't going yeah, up against Team Y. X, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get to go into this one where it immediately falls apart for Team Z, where everyone's just looking out for each other, being super selfish, whatever, even though they had this plan in place of positions, and everyone's just like, no, I need the ball. I want the ball. Fuck you. I want the ball. And meanwhile, Team X is kind of the same way to start, you know? And, you know, our, our pro tag, um, Isagi. Isagi. Aha. I remembered it. Uh, Isagi is starting to notice, like, oh, you know, their team's doing the same thing, but then, like, that, uh, like, the best guy on the team, he's, up. yeah, he immediately gets a goal. And from that point forward, Team X just kind of started to form it together as a team, you know, started to just kind of figure it out piece by piece. Meanwhile, Team Z is just completely just scattered all over the place, you know, which was an expected approach for this sort of series like you know you expected for them to immediately fall in the, they're on the they're at the bottom for a reason you know what i mean yes uh so you expected for them to completely fall in their face like this in this capacity uh and not you know they they sort of kind of figure it out there towards the end at least a couple people do but like you know the whole time they're trying to think about you know what was the saying that our psychotic you know teacher or you know runner of blue lock says something about uh from get to uh to, from get to zero you gotta get you gotta whatever get to one 
how to turn zero into a how to, one. how to turn zero into one that was the thing and that was that was like the, the big hint for this episode and just constantly isagagi, isagagi trying to figure out what exactly that means yeah being able to become the one to build that momentum and yep. terms of spotlight and play to be able to reach to a goal and him sort of mentally watching the game and everything leading to his realization of what they needed to do but just that their team was no way coordinated to be able to possibly do that to the point where they end up being 5-0 and him and Bachira just sort of like well this everyone being depressed and Bachira is just like well we're not winning but we can get a goal if it's just you and me, so, you Soggy. In. Yeah, right when he says you in, the eyes get all monstrified. And Soggy is just like, I'm in. And his eyes get all like demonified and everything, too. And we get that nice shot of him just like, go. And Soggy just completely sprints. Yep. And Bacher is just sort of chilling with the ball. Gets that nice little lob where Soggy's going to be. And Bacher's just like, you think I'm the only one? And the only one who can't see this? Right on top of him. Starts to block him. And he's just like, what do I do? Well, if I'm a striker, I take the shot. Meanwhile, behind him, he's got Kurishima and uh, the other guy's name, who I can't remember off, off the top of my head, both calling out shots. The guy, that, the guy that looks like Bakugo with the hair yes. and the guy that is like Bakugo in personality. That's how I distinguish the two of them. <laughs> yeah. Kusunami is the one who looks like him, and the other one who acts like him is the one whose name I can't remember. I can't remember his name either right now. Um. Yeah, both of them are calling for the ball, and Sagi's just like, "If I'm a true striker, I take the shot." He goes to take the shot, and just passes it to the right to Kuna Kunasagi, who's just like, "Great pass!" and nails that sucker in the goal. Yep. Yeah, at least we got one goal. Better and than better like, than another game. It was like what the W and Y team. Why got shut out? Was it? No, that was Y and uh, Team X or Team V. Team, Team v. v fucking murdered the fuck out of them yeah. with 8 0. Yeah. So, hey, that, that's a win for Team Z. They got a goal. <laughs> yeah. Then Baro and Sotsi Sagi saying if you're going to freeze up, there's no reason for you to be a striker. And Asagi spends the most of the rest of the episode in his mental place going, Am I talentless? Why did I hit that pass? Why did I not take the shot? Yeah, and he hit me him even saying like I intended to shoot. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and then we get everyone in the locker room arguing and whatnot. Bachira showing up in his birthday suit, like, hey, come on, calm down, guys. We still got games. I love Bachira already. I really <laughs> do. And then Quone, the tall dude who can jump super fucking high, is just like, Y'all don't understand how bad we have it. It's like We've lost a game. If and more or less breaks down the points, it's just like if we lose another one, we're done. Our best results now is if we get two wins and a draw, it'll pop us over seven points, which will give us a higher chance of being one of the two teams to pass. Otherwise, the thing that was causing everyone to fight at the beginning, the whole rule of if you're not one of the top two teams, only the top scorer of each of the other three teams will continue on. And then more, more explaining it than Isagi explaining his theory on what they're supposed to be doing in this whole selection period, explaining it to everyone, and then Ego showing up and be like, you're on the right path, and then showing all these little charts of everyone's weapon that they have to use as a striker. Mm -hmm. And I don't... Because I have actually at this point now started reading Blue Lock, and I'm past... I'm, what's most definitely going to be this season and into what would stuff would be in second season of did they start ex saying what their weapons were? I don't think it did. No. Okay. So one thing that I'm curious about this series after watching this episode as well, that kind of put a thought in my brain is that I don't know with how they were talking about, you know, how to turn zero into one, you are at zero, you need to get to one and then even continue to work your way up further. Right. Mm -hmm. And them talking about the best strikers and them also talking about in this episode, how these notable soccer players, these IRL soccer players like Ronaldo and uh, Messi and another one, I forgot who, you, hey, know, uh, you know, you know, they were talked about. And the common thing between all of them is that, hey, they may be great egotistical strikers, but they've never won a World Cup either. 
is that I can't help but to feel like this whole thing is bogus and they're not trying to get the best striker. They're trying to create the best team and just create the no, best. No, they're definitely working to make the best striker. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I just couldn't help but get this feeling that they were trying to create the best team and turn, turn a team of strikers into a perfect team. Nope, as it stands where I've read to now. No, that's literally still just what Ego's doing. He's... The single best striker. Okay. <laughs> he does not care about any other position at this time. Okay. I don't know. That that's just the vibe that I got in this episode. So Uh they go a little bit further into it and we'll see a little bit of that going into the season. But um uh, Yeah, no. Mm, they okay. they don't mention anything about the other positions other than uh they mention again the whole turning one doing zero to one, then turning that one into ten, then ten into a hundred. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, fair enough. I don't know, just a thought that I had. You know, that may, maybe yeah. they're trying to make a team of strikers, not a single striker. So, I don't know. Best offense, you know, best offense is good defense. Best defense is good offense, you know, so. Uh, anyway, uh, any other thoughts on this episode? It was pretty solid. I'm really pumped to watch the new episode this weekend. Yeah, no, it's solid. Animation still looks great, especially when we go into demon mode. Yep. Uh, favorite episode of the week. Um, I'll give it a Chainsaw Man. Actually, that was a fun watch. I'll give it to Spy Family. That's a good pick too. All right, you sure you're not gonna give it to Dragon Quest? You know, last time you can do it. Oh. Last time. Did I ever give Dragon Quest the best one? Maybe like twice. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe twice. Yeah. Damn, it must have been light. <laughs> must have been a light week. Uh, all right, let's hop into chapter readings and get out of here. Uh, one Piece, 1,064. Uh, I would give this one an eight, uh, enjoying this little conflict we have going on right now. Uh, My Hero Academia, 370. I don't know, like a six. I mean, it's an interesting. It's interesting. It is interesting what we're, what we're touching on this chapter. But I, I'm more interested in the other shit going on right now. Take me back to that. <laughs> I mean, I'd give it an eight because... It's something I've been curious about for a long time about the series, so they're finally addressing it. Yeah. My whole question that brought you and Josh to fruition of like, people with the animal quirks, how do they come out born? <laughs> that is true. Me and Josh went down a rabbit hole with that. <laughs> and it finally gave me more context that I was like, oh, cool. So I give it a personally. Okay. Uh, did Black Clover have a chapter this week or am I crazy? Oh. Okay, I'm crazy. All right, so 342 is next. Got it. JJK202. Nope. No chapter? I don't think there was. I don't remember reading one. So, okay. yeah, no chapter. Uh, Michio's Core Family, 1-5-1. One, one. Uh, I'd give this one probably an 8, personally. Undead Unlock, 132. Ah, uh, man. It's like a 9 or a 10, honestly. You really? Know, yeah, it's, dude, my Undead Unlock is so damn good right now. I give it a 10. You know what? I'm giving this bad boy a 10. I love it. It is so good, dude. Uh, so we successfully got the loop off. So Fuko has now basically created a new loop in history, whatever, you know, even whenever she was talking to, to basically God before went on with the loop, like she, you know, God was just like, Oh yeah. You know, they're all dead. They're all dead and stuff. Andy's alive though, somewhere floating out in the cosmos suffering every single second, but he's alive. <laughs> and you see like, just like a piece of his head just floating through space, but he's undead. So he is alive right now. <laughs> and then what really just tipped it off for me is whenever like we're in the loop right and it's been a long time to chat about this it's been so long ago but do you remember whenever there was those really string of awesome chapters where they battled um i think it was spring and there was that character who essentially saw the entire future of the series and but that character was invisible I remember you mentioning that. Yeah, those were such great chapters. That character was such an amazing character. Because, like, the character that was invisible, the character that you saw throughout those chapters, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time. This has all come back to me literally right now. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, the character that you saw in those chapters wasn't even the character's actual body. It was, like, you know, basically a, an illusion of that body. Because the actual body is permanently invisible because of the un... I think it was, it may have just been like unsee. I don't remember, but because of its, you know, unability, negating ability, like no one can see or hear this character. This character is permanently fucking alone, no matter what. 
and nothing they can't do anything about it because like with that arc it ended in such a beautiful fashion because like you know this character had that had that mystical item that pin that allowed them to write this manga this series that basically project projected the entire future of what was going to happen between undead and luck and everything right up to the, to that certain point and that arc yeah. ended where you know, after they could no longer see that illusion form of it, whatever, it ended with a, just a nice shot of after they beat Spring or Autumn, whichever one, you know, Andy put up a thumbs up. It happened to be in the same direction as the invisible character, you know, acknowledging that character, even though he literally cannot see that it's there. So you get to see that character again. That character makes a return, right? But this time it's the, it's the little kid version of it, you know, whenever they found the pin on the ground and Fuko stops them from taking that pin. It's just like, you know, ah, don't don't take that pin. Trust me. You don't want that pin. It's just like, and Fuku, wow. basically, you know, and Fuko's just like, I'll take the pin. You don't want it. But hey, I really like your manga that you're writing. And the kid's like, whoa, whoa, what? I've only told my mom about that. And Fuko's like, oh, no, I know all about it. I love it. I, you know, in fact, I want to tell you an interesting little story as well. You know, because again, Fuko's, you know, already from another loop. And me, whenever she's taking up the pin, you just see her like carrying a massive backpack full of all these like rare items. She's essentially <laughs> trying to save all these people's fucking lives from getting cursed into different negating abilities and stuff. So it's just, it's just nice. Everything about it was awesome. Loved it. It was, it was amazing. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Mashal, 129. I'll give it a seven. I don't remember it. I read it. I, I know for a fact I did. It's not in my continue reading tab. Let me confirm that. It's just people fighting the eldest brother, getting slapped about. Yeah, it's not my continue reading tab. Yep, 129. I read it. I don't remember it. So I guess I'll give it a five. Uh, Sakamoto Day is 92. I'll give it an eight. All right. I'll give it an eight as well. Uh, Loose Samurai, 83. Eight. Okay. Blue Box, 74. Give seven. seven. Seven sounds good. P six fifty four. Six. Uh, Akane Banashi thirty five. Nine. All right, it's Boruto time again, boys. It's Boruto time again. Seventy four, I think, is the chapter. I think I got it. I didn't actually double check that, but I think it's. I think it's right. So did she move in? Yep. Okay. Yep she she moved in. Uh, and immediately she's like super flustered to be around Kawaki because he's just so cute. Do we have tropes of him accidentally walking in her on her when she's in the bath? That or? Isn't, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> it was pretty interesting though getting the chapter going whenever she arrives because like when she gets there on train and meets Shikamaru, like she's just like, I already heard your plan. I'm gonna go later. And she just starts flying in the air, which shocks everyone. You think at this point, Naruto, that something like that may not shock you, but okay, she is an Otsuki after all. Holy shit, I think I said that right on first try. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, you you would think that wouldn't shock anyone at this point, considering like Madara could do it. You know, he was part Otsuki. You know, Kaguya could obviously do it. Like this is not the first time we've seen something like this, but whatever. So she immediately just goes flying to the house and just kind of goes ahead of everyone else. And you see it right across the way. You see like. Um, you know, Sadara and Mitsuki, they're kind of watching stuff from a distance. Konohamaru is as well. Konohamaru is still currently in the house with Boruto and Kwaki, just kind of breaking down final mission plans, and he's going to leave. Uh, and then as he's going to leave, she arrives, and Sadara and Mitsuki see her or whatever. Uh, Konohamaru sees her, and he just completely just falls out, you know, because of her ability where they fall in love and shit. So he completely just falls out, passed out, just magically in love. And, uh, you know, also on the other side of the other house with Sadara and Mitsuki, you see uh, Shikidai. And, um, God, Eno's kid, drawing a blank on the name right now, Eno's kid. And then, uh, God, drawing a blank on Choji's daughter too, drawing a blank on her name too. But they, but that team, you know, that squad, the new Eno Shikacho trio, they show up and, uh, you know, because they wanted to get a look at her or whatever. Cause you know, uh, Choji's daughter is like, I need to see my rival since she, uh, is apparently in love with Kawaki cause Choji's daughter's in love with Kawaki too, you know, okay, and, cool. and they all see her and they all like fall in love right except for two characters two characters specifically do not immediately like fall in love with her and that was Sadara and Shikadai they're the only ones everyone else sees her and she's like oh my god she's so beautiful beautiful but the best part of it all was fucking Mitsuki keep in mind this is like Ochumaru's kid right you know he's he's got a personality but he's also like very blank you know blank wall where like he sees her you he know Rachimaru had a kid yeah but who 
himself a test tube. <laughs> God damn it, Orochimaru. Okay. <laughs> Basically. Uh, Orochimaru poses as his mom for, for conferences. <laughs> So anyway, for parent teacher conference. That is that All is right. that is an episode in the anime is that Orochimaru goes to a parent teacher conference. I'm not joking. He sits down with Mitsuki and Shino at the academy for a parent teacher conference. I'm not joking. All right. And the whole time for that episode, you see Yamoto following him behind him. <laughs> Throughout the whole village. Anyway, so you see Mitsuki sees her. He's just like, he's just staring at her. The only thing he says is what is this feeling? <laughs> He's so confused what's happening to him. And then everyone's just like, she, you know, like, uh, you know, Eno's son and, uh, you know, I think's his name and, uh, Choji's daughter. is just like, Oh, let's get closer. Let's get closer. And me, like, yeah, let's get closer. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is experiencing love and horniness all at the same time. Right now we're seeing it live in Boruto chapter 74. Uh, I give the chapter an eight, though. It gave me a good laugh. It was entertaining. Uh, Chainsaw Man, one oh eight. Super. Uh, no, Super still on a break. Gotcha. Yeah, it's on. A, it's on a few month break right now. Um, seven. I I agree with seven. Kaju, we're getting into. We're already getting into the what the fuck territory. Basically, Kaju number eight seventy three. I give it a nine. I'd give it an eight. Tokyo Avengers 275. Man. What the hell? Man. <laughs> um, I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine as well. Dude, it was an awesome chapter. Uh, I guess Rent a Girlfriend was on a break. I uh, did not update on the website that's been very, very trustworthy for a few of these series. Um, so Eden Zero, uh, 213. Man, just continuously just throwing one plot twist after another. Just like when you're going wild, it is. And it's still very clearly like we're still trying to figure out who Hermit is referring to. You know, it teased that it was potentially character A. Then we find out character A, that's not the case. So now there's another mystery character of whoever Hermit's referring to. Lots of lots of wild things happening right now. And also big rest in pieces. Big rest in pieces. Okay. To one character at the end of the chapter. A little friend. I mean, fuck them. Why? <laughs> She's great. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> but no, seriously, yeah. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I give it an eight. I give it an eight as well. Uh, I just wanted to do a hard and then see what your reaction was. How dare you? <laughs> Suddenly sends four Nazi apocalypse 82. Uh, it's a, just a kind of a bridge chapter. So, I mean, it's like a seven, you know, six, you know, had entertaining enough content, I guess. Uh, next up, uh, on unordinary 280. I, I actually didn't read a few of these webtoons. I will be completely real. Uh, I'll give it a seven. Weak hero 213. Oh, eight. Elseed 192. Nine. Down to Earth 118. I'd give it an eight. And I did not read Made Demon Queen or Mortal Weeks. I didn't read a lot of webtoons. It's on me. Uh, favorite chapter of the week, Undead. Easy. Uh, Tokyo. Tokyo is my close second. Tokyo was very good. Tokyo uh, was fantastic. I really enjoyed Tokyo. All right. Well, that wraps up for today's episode. Hit everything that we need to hit. Uh, friendly reminder. Come tune in to Terrible Football Show on Tuesday, November 11th, just for a few minutes. Give me about like 10 minutes of your time. That's all I'm asking for. And then about after that, we'll probably jump into football. Zach will be there. Zach will be there. So come say hi to Zach. I mean, I can't leave even though you say give like a couple minutes. Yeah, I know. Just give me like a few minutes of your time. You know, let us show off the studio. It's really cool. Uh, show off the jerseys. Uh, you will want to pick these up. And uh, also very excited to start promoting these uh, because Agent Inc. does have uh, pay through a firm options. Uh, so that is awesome and a great way to promote uh, buying the product. You can get it in four interest free payments of like 17 bucks. Yep. And for anyone that is doubtful of the interest free stuff, I have personally used a firm to buy my computer setting right here. A firm is awesome. Trust me. 
you know, love affirm. I'd use it again. In fact, I'm probably going to use it again here soon on something else. Love affirm. So it's a good way to pick up the jerseys if you don't want to drop like 70 bucks for it right off the get go. That's fine. Understandable. We also got a couple hats, got a shirt. We also have our merch store too. So it's cool. Anime Plus going live here sometime soon. We'll now figure out if we want to start, you know, December 1st or not. <laughs> we'll figure that out or not. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And we'll let you know. Uh, Zach, anything else you want to shout out involving anything we chat about? You talking about the Agent Inks thing didn't remind me of something. I was looking through that the other day. And if you scroll over a shirt, it'll pan to a digitally rendered, uh, digitally done thing as a person wearing a yeah. shirt. And that just made me chuckle. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, me just picturing some model showing up. It's like, all right, here's everything we got you to model. It's like, What's with the trash can? Yeah, what what's up with this trash can? I don't get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the trash can, man. Trash can's trash awesome. It's great. I love it. I love it. You know, something else that I was thinking about doing here soon, because I figured why not? You know, I have the ability to. I still pay for the subscription, even though I don't use it at all, wasting money on it. So I might as well get some use out of it. Is I thought about turning like our podcast logos, all three shows, the Sparky Three, the Trash Can, maybe a few other designs, original designs that we really like, and uh, putting up on Displate to sell. Okay. I am still a member. I still have the cl- Displate Club, so I, I am allowed to sell stuff, uh, even though I have not bought anything Displate in a while. I love Displate. Just haven't got around to buying Displates more. Are great. Yeah, we just have so many, and we we probably yeah. not, we're probably not even going to reuse them in the studio because um, I I just don't want to continue to rip off shit off the walls you know brand new studio and all but uh yeah may 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 do that so you can get a trash can on a metal poster isn't that awesome i i want that (laughs) (laughs) all right i'm gonna hit the music uh zach last thoughts like comment subscribe rate whatever your platform allows it does help if you're watching this on youtube you can hit subscribe to help us out there and you can also check out the animan plus youtube which is now easier to find and subscribe there as well to help us out there thank you very much bye and do everything that he said and more, such as check us out at our website, sparky3.com. You sign up for free or sign up for five bucks a month. Check out our merch store, sparky3shop.com. Join the Discord down in the description below. Uh, and yeah, like you said about the uh, Animan Plus YouTube, makes it a lot easier to find. YouTube.com forward slash at symbol Animan Plus, plus being spelt out. So I'll have that down in the description going forward. Uh, keep an eye out for that as well, because you, if you, like I said, if you do stop by on 11 1 with Terrible Football Show, uh, we do have that third announcement that's pretty neat, and maybe that channel will be involved with that third announcement, but you won't know unless you come and listen to the show. Come listen to the show, tell me that you're from Animan Plus, and I'll give you a prize. But I'm not going to tell you the prize. You're just going to have to come and find out the prize for yourself. Uh, all right, guys, until next time, have a good one. See you. Bye.